new governments do have a tendency to get into power, excitedly formulate policy and make very quick decisions without enough due diligence on the history of issues. And that's what my guest is accusing the Albanese government of doing, exhibiting an astonishing ignorance about children's television habits. In fact, the manager of opposition business and shadow minister for the arts, government services and the digital economy, Paul Fletcher, says the ignorance risks harming Australian families. Joining me now to discuss that and a little bit more is Paul Fletcher. Good to see you in. Good to be with you, Chris. All right, let's talk about this. Let's start with the children's content. This week, the government claimed that a commercial television compliance report showed that there was a reduction in content broadcast for Australian children, but they just focused on commercial television and didn't think at all about the other sources of content for children. Am I right? That's right. They missed the point. So this report that came out tells us the programming on 7, 9 and 10, essentially, says nothing about ABC, SBS or the streaming services like Netflix, Stan, Disney+. Plus. We had a very careful look at this in government and we changed the rules because what we found was virtually no children were watching children's television on 7, 9 and 10. Right. They're, wa they're watching it on ABC and on the streaming services. We did a bunch of other things. We provided an extra $20 million to the Australian Children's Television Foundation so there could be more television produced for children. Uh, we also increased from 20% to 30% what's called the producer offset for Australian television. That means more television production of all kinds, including children's television production. And we also said that we would legislate to give the Minister a power to set an Australian content spend requirement for the streaming services. So we had a very clear plan to deal with all of this, but we started with what's the evidence of what people are actually doing? Mm. Now we see a new Labor government uh, in their media release, they seem to be suggesting that it was all going to be uh, sorted out through Mr Burke's national, national cultural plan. Look, if they're proposing to reimpose the quota on children's television that we change to make it a quota across three kinds of content, drama, documentaries and children's television, Mr Burke should come out and say so clearly, but it looks like they've just misunderstood how this whole They've misunderstood it. Works. And, of course, just because you're not getting enough content out of the commercial channels, if that's the, if that's the case, or kids aren't watching enough commercial channels, shouldn't... You shouldn't put the onus back on the commercial channels to produce more content. Well, we know. It's not a hypothetical thing. We know that very few children were watching children's television on 7, 9 and 10. Yeah. At the same time, what we wanted to do was support the Australian production sector to go after the opportunities for drama, for children's, for other things in the Australian market, but also the global market where streaming is exploding. That's one reason why we increased the, the offset from 20% to 30%. It's why we provided an extra $20 million to the Australian Children's Television Foundation, an extra $30 million to Screen Australia. And so, unfortunately, what we've seen is Labor likes nothing more than regulation, prescriptive rules set by Canberra, that, and they seem to be looking at doing that in ignorance of what's actually happening and what children are actually watching. Yeah. And the answer is they're watching very little on the commercial stations. They need to keep their cotton-picking hands off all of this. Now, John Howard's latest book lands on Wednesday. He's been very critical of the Morrison government. He says Scott Morrison mishandled issues, didn't take the right position on integrity in women and has poisoned the party via the acceptance of factions. Do you firstly accept what he says as factual? Look, John Howard's had some pretty frank comments to offer and it is important that we recognise we had a bad defeat and we need to understand, we need to carefully examine what happened and why. And we've got to be honest with ourselves. Uh, that's why um, Brian Lochnane and Senator Jane Hume are leading a review. Uh, John Howard's view is, of course, always given respect mm. by Liberals and many others around Australia. Um, I do think that the, uh, the Morrison government achieved a significant amount. Let's not forget we were dealing with a very challenging pandemic. And the results, both in public health terms and in economic terms, uh, few countries can match what was achieved. Of course, you can look at uh, achievements in the national security field, such as AUKUS. Very important that we're getting access to that US nuclear technology. And it is pleasing, I must say, that the present government is proposing to continue with that. That's absolutely the right thing to do. It, it is. But, look, we have to have an honest conversation about what went wrong because we had a bad result. There's yeah. no sugarcoating. And with the success of the Teals, do you think that meant that you didn't get 
integrity right. You didn't get women right and maybe you didn't get climate change right. I don't know. Well, the clear fact is on integrity, we had a 300-plus paid bill. Yeah. We'd done the detailed work um, and we stood ready to introduce it at uh, the moment the Labor Party agreed that uh, they would provide support for it. So we had a clear position on it. Obviously, John, Heward, uh, John, John Howard's views uh, have to be uh, respected and taken seriously. But to put the other side of the picture, uh, we did have a clear plan to manage it. Nobody could say that we weren't dealing uh, with the integrity issue. Now, there were plenty of people who had criticisms of the particular model that we had developed, but we'd done a lot of detailed work. One quick one before I let you go. The argument over the Indigenous voice to Parliament really heated up last week mm. and will probably heat up again. Where do you stand on it? Do we need more detail? And do, do you agree with what I think, that it's hideous to think that we cannot have a debate about this, that people are being called racist because they want more detail and they're not convinced that this should get over the line? Well, look, as, as Peter Dutton, our leader, has said, uh, we want to engage respectfully on this important issue. But the history of referendums in Australia is very clear. Uh, you do need to give people the clear detail uh, and it's a high bar to get over. Uh, to get that majority in the majority of jurisdictions, that's a high bar to get over. So it's really not a, a sort of... It's not a political talking point. If the government is serious about getting this through, they will need to share the detail with the Australian people. Must. Because the Australian people will rightly say we need to have the detail if we are going to agree to a change to the Constitution. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in, Paul Fletcher. Thank you, Chris. Okay.